based on your past performance, I'm sure you'll get more value than you give. Well. But in any case, uh, it was my understanding that if the amount of shares issued for a conversion of a convertible issue were greater than 20% of the total amount of shares outstanding, then it would require a vote of the stockholders under Delaware law. I may be wrong. I think it's a stock exchange rule, isn't it, Charlie? Yes. Yeah, you're exchange. right about the rule, but it, yeah. uh, it's a New York stock exchange. New York stock exchange rule. It, I, I that would be that would be five billion dollars plus of deal, and uh, you know we would love to make a five billion dollar deal, but I don't think we're going to do it. So I, I would say that the chances of any any acquisition being large enough so that it requires a shareholder vote is probably slim, but but uh, but it isn't because we wouldn't be interested. And if you know if we if we have one, we'll we'll be coming back to you <laughs> with the votes already in hand. <laughs> Are there any other questions on the preferred? We can talk more about it later, too. I just want to make, oh, here we are, sure. Good morning, Mr. Buffett. Morning. I'm Raina DeCosta Lowy from Chicago. I'm very proud to be here, and I've seen you grow so that pretty soon we're going to be out in the football field. <laughs> uh, I think your explanation was very helpful because as I read this, and I'm sure many of the other lay folks, I didn't understand what you were doing. And you mentioned the preferred stock, but in the prospectus, it's not clear whether it would be the convertible preferred, the straight preferred, and you cleared that answering a few other questions, but some of the people felt it would dilute their stock. Yeah, well, I, I, I should have made that clear in the annual report, and I'm glad I've had this chance to do it today. Anything else on the preferred? Okay. You don't have to come back to the shareholders for a vote after these shares are authorized for the terms of it. Um, and you've discussed this in terms of buying companies. My question is, you yourself, through Berkshire Hathaway, own the preferred shares of, sh of several companies, Salomon, U.S. Air, American Express. Did those shareholders have to vote on the terms of the preferred shares that you bought for those companies, or was that left to, at the board of directors' decision level? Could you clarify those, that point? Go, excuse me, go ahead. Could you clarify that point, please? Yeah. We, we, bought, we bought a, I think we probably bought six issues mm -hmm. of uh, preferred directly from um, companies, and uh, since none of those triggered that New York Stock Exchange rule that we discussed earlier, uh, and they could have if they'd been somewhat larger, but they didn't. Uh, none of those deals had to be approved by the shareholders. I think the only deal we've had with a company that had to be approved by the shareholders was when we bought the Cap Cities ABC stock. Uh, uh, well, we bought it early in 1986. I think it was approved by their shareholders in 1985. But uh, the, only, the only situations where it would have had to have been approved is if it triggered the New York Stock Exchange rule, and, and our purchases were not that large that they, uh, they did that. Any other questions? Yep, there's one more. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Dale Valkovich. I'm from Champaign, Illinois. A recent issue of Barron's indicated that it may be possible to issue a best of all possible worlds preferred, that being one where the... Uh, the dividend looks like interest to the issuer and is tax deductible, and to the purchaser, it would qualify for the dividends received deduction. Do you think that structure might be uh, possible with these shares? Well, we haven't thought about that. I, I know what you're talking about on that, but I, I don't. I don't think it would be possible. Uh, for one thing, I don't think I don't think you could probably have a tax-free deal that way, Charlie. Do you? Uh, we probably wouldn't try. Uh, for one thing, I don't think I don't think you could probably have a tax-free deal that way, Charlie. Do you? Uh, we probably wouldn't try and be that cute. <laughs> I've got several quips in mind, but I think I'll keep them to myself. <laughs> my guess is that that form does not work for a long time. I, I know what you're talking about, Anna, but my guess is it, it, it doesn't. Um, uh, some some companies, I, I, I don't, and we'll get on with this, but some companies care about the consideration they give 
uh, in a deal, whether it's cash or preferred or so on, because they care about the accounting treatment that they get. They want, they usually want pooling treatment rather than purchase accounting treatment. I won't get into that here. I know it's going to disappoint you, but I won't get into that here. Uh, although I may in the next annual report, and uh, uh, that is of absolutely no. We have a shareholder to body that's intelligent, not a wit about the to understand accounting the economic reality. We, receive, we feel that, and that uh, that by playing various games in terms of how we try to structure it and maybe flow part of the purchase price back through the income statement or anything of the sort that which is done uh, is not that's not something that we're that we care about at all we would rather do whatever makes the most sense for us and for the seller and then explain to you whatever accounting peculiarities may arise out of the transaction and uh, that probably differentiates us from uh, most companies, and it probably helps us make a deal occasionally. Anything else? Really? Okay. Now, now I can hear you fine. Okay. 